the uh, as an example, by the way, to get more to, toward economic questions, uh, as an example of uh, what I mean by pub uniting with a public part of the public that hates the establishment and hates the government, I happen to live in California, the glorious summer of 1978, when uh, Proposition 13 was passed. And, uh, and it was a magnificent thing to see because everybody was against it. Everybody hated it. It's a terrible thing. It will destroy the state government. There won't be any police anymore if you pass this big tax cut, property tax cut. There won't be any schools. There won't be any firemen. The roads will decay. Uh, and, and, and none of it worked. I mean, the whole, and everybody, the whole big business, big unions, big government, our beloved teachers' unions, the whole group weighed in. The press, the media, TV, everybody attacked it. They're responsible. How can, the, how can these people be so responsible in favor of cutting the property taxes such a two, by two thirds? A terrible thing. And uh, and as the thing built, as the hysteria mounted, the polls began to record the popular Proposition 13 was getting more and more support. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, and at the end, it's of course swept the victory, but no no establishment support whatsoever. Two or three economists, <laughs> and that was about it. And uh, as I say, it's a glorious thing to see. And if, and if it could happen, then it could happen. Uh, somewhere at some another time, too. Of course, that was the heyday of anti-government sentiment in the United States so far, which was the late 70s, before the Reagan administration came in and co-opted the whole movement. <clears throat> uh, but it can happen again, because I think one of, one of the glorious things about what's happening last since President Bush got in, uh, with, that, with eight years of the Reagan miasma being lifted at long last, and the sort of narcosis or whatever, <laughs> With a Reagan smile and a head shaking and all the rest of this. <laughs> People begin to see reality once more. And what happens as soon as Bush is hardly in office? He, you know, he, and suddenly what happens? He, there's the SNL crisis, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And um, uh, and, but, and Secretary of Treasury Brady comes out with a brilliant idea: the way to save the SNL, the SNL and pay off the depositors and increase. Uh, tax the uh, tax the uh, deposits, bank deposits. Uh, small tax, only 25 cents for every hundred dollars. What is it? Public won't care. By the way, here's I think a problem with the public choice people. They would say, well, the public wouldn't care. It's a small amount. The costs are spread over many people, teeny amount. Uh, and it was a magnificent, it was a wonderful thing, one of the great, greatest things that happened in American politics in my memory, namely a firestorm of hatred. <laughs> rose up, and in three three hours the whole proposition was dead. In three or four hours, it was great because it was it was, a, it was advanced at ten o'clock in the morning one day, whenever it was. And, and by three o'clock, so this crossfire, whatever the on, it says, dead. It's finished. I mean, Democrat, Republican, it make a difference. It's finished. We're taking idiotic stop. Uh, it's it. It's out. So that was the, I said, what a magnificent thing. It's just beautiful. It reminded me, of course, in the early '80s, even the high day. Of Honeymoon, they try to put them with holding tax and on interest and dividends. That was killed also. Uh, and this is a great reversion of that. Okay, the second step, which happened shortly thereafter, which is sort of like a one two step <coughs> in the establishment, was the, uh, was the congressional pay raise scam. I'm sure you all remember that. <laughs> one of the beautiful things in American politics. Not organized by the Libertarian Party, <laughs> but caught us by surprise. <laughs> and and they, they have this whole thing rigged, so you have the like, so-called bipartisan commission of beloved people. Uh, I use the term beloved, by the way, from many of us, by people who are beloved by all right-thinking people. New York Times, CBS, <laughs> And uh, one of the most beloved people in, in 20th century America was Lloyd Cutler, who was the chairman of this bipartisan commission. And Cutler, in his wisdom, as a long-time lobbyist of the public trough, of course, <laughs> came to the conclusion that we need a 50% pay raise for congressmen and for top bureaucrats with judges and everything else. It's desperately needed. Otherwise, we'll lose these great people. <laughs> we'll lose them. Pay them now. <laughs> it didn't, uh, didn't, wasn't a grabber. <laughs> and, uh, and the thing is, that every, and, and it was organized, the revolution against, there was a revolution against the pay raise, it was organized by radio talk show hosts. Heroic group, because uh, the TV is sort of locked up. And you watch TV, you, you know, you watch I mean, Donahue and all these other creeps. Uh, and and uh, and the radio talk show house, whoever, was sort of semi-libertarian or whatever, and they rose up as one man, practically, and had this whole network across the country, send tea bags to the congressmen protesting against this rotten. How dare they? See, the point is, it's a moral indignation again. How dare these SOBs vote themselves a pay increase at our expense? 
very simple and very effective. In the 19th century, any time Congress voted itself a pay rate, even $100 a year, they were thrown out of the next election, just like that. How dare these people do that? Okay, so the same spirit rose up. It's not dead in America. And, uh, and tea bags were sent to all these people, and, and even White, was it, White Sulphur Springs, a green bar or whatever, the Democratic uh, Congressman or National Committee, whatever, met, and then conclave, all of a sudden they're dead using tea bags and tickets. <laughs> and uh, it, it worked. It worked. That's the great thing about it, because the one thing about Congress, I mean, we, we complain about a lot about Congress, of course, but one thing about them, they have to come up for re-election pretty often, so they, they're sensitive to public protest, the pressure. That's the point. It's not that the idea is begging these people. So put pressure on them. Look, you, look, you and you so and so. If you're voting against the, me for the pay raise, you're out. You're finished. And so it worked. We beat it. And it's, a, it's just a great thing. It's magnificent. Despite all the establishment, despite all the hokey arguments, we'll, we'll lose these great people because nobody, nobody quit. I mean, nobody has. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of Rothbard's laws. I have a bunch of sociological laws. One of them is nobody ever resigns. And once in a while, of course, resign, but it's very rare. Okay, so this is, uh, these, are, these are heartening signs. These are signs that things are breaking loose again in the United States as they were before the Reagan administration. Uh,